Just one minute ago, Kilauea Volcano delivered one of the most spectacular eruptions we have witnessed this year. We have it all on camera until the very moment the webcam itself was destroyed by the eruption. Saturday morning started quietly at Hawaii Volcanoes National Park. At 8.45 a.m., after a full day of unusually low volcanic activity, Kilauea suddenly roared back to life in what scientists are calling Episode 38. What happened next was captured in real time by monitoring equipment until the eruption literally consumed the cameras recording it. I will break down exactly what we witnessed as this eruption escalated from normal activity to a rare triple fountain display that sent lava over 1,000 feet into the air. You will see how quickly volcanic conditions can change and why this particular eruption caught even experienced volcanologists off guard. The morning of the eruption began with deceptive calm. Kilauea had been unusually quiet for nearly 24 hours, with minimal seismic activity and gas emissions well below normal levels. Then, at exactly 8.45 a.m., everything changed in a matter of minutes. The first signs appeared at the north vent, where a small lava fountain began bubbling to the surface. Within moments, the south vent joined the display, creating what appeared to be a synchronized, volcanic performance. These were not the explosive eruptions you might expect from other volcanoes. Instead, Kilauea was putting on a fountain show. The reason Kilauea behaves like a fiery water fountain instead of exploding comes down to its unique magma composition. Hawaiian basaltic lava has relatively low gas content and flows more like thick honey than the sticky magma that is rich in gas, which is found in explosive volcanoes. When pressure builds beneath the surface, it does not create violent explosions. Instead, it pushes molten rock skyward in graceful arcs that can reach extraordinary heights. By 9.30 in the morning, something remarkable happened that even seasoned volcano watchers rarely see. A third fountain emerged from the north vent, creating triple lava fountains operating simultaneously. Two fountains were now shooting from the north vent, while the south vent continued its own display. This triple fountain formation is considered a rare volcanic spectacle, occurring when multiple pathways open within the same vent system. The webcam positioned in the restricted area of the park captured every moment of this escalation. The camera had been strategically placed to monitor exactly this type of activity, but its location also made it vulnerable to the very phenomenon it was designed to observe. At 9.45 a.m., the eruption entered a new phase of intensity. The South Vents Fountain suddenly exploded upward with tremendous force, sending lava and volcanic gases over 1,000 feet into the air. This height tells us something crucial about the pressure that had been building in Kilauea's magma chamber. The higher the fountain, the greater the gas pressure driving the eruption. To put this height in perspective, a 1,000-foot lava fountain is taller than most skyscrapers. It is comparable to some of Kilauea's most memorable historical eruptions, including the famous fountain displays of the 1980s that drew visitors from around the world. The sheer volume of molten rock being ejected at this height indicated that significant pressure had accumulated beneath the surface. The webcam continued transmitting right up until its final moments. Viewers watching the live stream could see lava spattering closer and closer to the camera's position. The heat signature on the footage showed temperatures approaching the camera's operational limits. Then, just before 10 a.m., the transmission cut to black. What we witnessed was the webcam's destruction in real time. The camera that had been faithfully documenting the eruption became a casualty of the very event it was recording. This destruction was not unexpected given the camera's location in the restricted zone, but it provided a dramatic end to the morning's volcanic theater. This eruption stands out even among Kilauea's impressive history of fountain displays. The combination of triple fountains, the rapid escalation from quiet to explosive activity, and the 1,000-foot heights makes Episode 38 one of the most significant eruptions of the current volcanic cycle. 
The synchronized nature of the multiple vents suggests that pressure had been building across a broader area of the volcano's plumbing system than monitoring equipment initially detected. Let me walk you through the minute-by-minute -minute breakdown of how Saturday's eruption escalated so dramatically. At 8.45 a.m., seismic monitoring stations detected the first tremor signals indicating magma movement. Within three minutes, thermal cameras registered temperature spikes at both vent locations, confirming that molten rock was reaching the surface. By 9.15 a.m., gas emission sensors showed a sharp increase in sulfur dioxide levels indicating that deeper magma with higher gas content was now feeding the eruption. This was the first scientific clue that the eruption would intensify beyond typical Kilauea activity. The triple fountain formation at 9.45 a.m. was scientifically significant for several reasons. When multiple fountains emerge from a single vent system, it indicates that the underground magma chamber has developed complex pathways to the surface. This suggests that pressure had been building not just in one location, but across a broader network of underground channels. The 1,000-foot fountain heights placed this eruption among the top 10% of Kilauea's recorded fountain events. Historical data shows that fountains exceeding 800 feet typically indicate magma chamber pressures that have been building for weeks or months, even when surface activity appears minimal. The webcam's destruction highlights both the value and limitations of real-time volcanic monitoring. The camera was positioned approximately 1,200 feet from the active vents, which should have been a safe distance based on previous eruption patterns. However, the intensity of episode 38 exceeded these predictions, demonstrating how quickly volcanic conditions can surpass established safety parameters. Current monitoring systems at Kilauea include seismic networks, thermal cameras, gas sensors, and ground deformation equipment. While these systems detected the eruption's onset, they could not predict the rapid escalation to triple fountains or the extreme heights that followed. This limitation is common in volcanic monitoring worldwide. The webcam's location in the restricted area of Hawaii Volcanoes National Park was intentional. These cameras are placed in zones where human access is prohibited precisely because of the volcanic hazards. The restricted areas are determined by computer models that calculate lava flow paths, gas exposure levels, and projectile hazards from fountain activity. Safety protocols immediately went into effect when the eruption began. All hiking trails within two miles of the active vents were closed and aircraft were restricted from flying below 3,000 feet over the eruption site. These measures protect both visitors and emergency responders who might need to access the area. What this eruption tells us about Kilauea's current volcanic cycle is particularly important. The rapid escalation from quiet conditions to intense fountain activity suggests that the volcano's magma supply system remains robust and capable of sudden changes. This pattern indicates that Kalawia is likely to continue producing significant eruptions throughout this volcanic cycle. The destruction of monitoring equipment during active eruptions is an accepted risk in volcanology. These cameras and sensors are considered expendable tools that provide valuable data right up until the moment they are destroyed. The footage captured before the webcam's destruction will be analyzed for months to better understand fountain dynamics and eruption mechanics. Real-time volcanic monitoring faces inherent challenges when eruptions exceed predicted parameters, as Saturday's webcam destruction clearly demonstrated. Subscribe to QuakeLore for continued coverage of Kilauea's ongoing activity.